In this lecture, we're going to do a few more examples in which we're going to determine the absolute configuration of our enantiomers using the Kahn Ingold Prelog Priority System. So our first job is to find the stereogenic carbon and then we're going to label the four different groups attached to our stereogenic carbon according to this priority system. So we're going to label them one to four, one having the highest priority and four having the lowest priority. So let's begin with enantiomer one. So this enantiomer has the following stereogenic carbon. This carbon is attached to four different groups. So let's begin labeling. So let's begin with four. Which one of these groups has the lowest priority? Which one of these groups has the lowest atomic number? Well, out of all these four groups, these two groups have the same exact atomic number. They both have an atomic number of one. But this is an isotope of H. It's called deuterium, and it has a higher atomic weight. And that means this gets a 4 and this gets a 3. So this is higher in priority because it has a higher atomic uh, weight. So label this as 4, label this as 3. Next, we have an O attached and we have a carbon attached. Since oxygen has a higher atomic number, we label this with a 1. So that means this has the highest priority and this has the second highest priority. So we labeled our carbon with a two. Now our goal is to hide this CH bond. We want to look at this molecule in a way so that this CH bond is hidden. So we look this way. So we're looking directly at this CH bond. So that means we have to flip this molecule this way. So this bond will go here, this bond will go here, and this will be on top and I'll show you in a second. So this is our CO bond, this is our CC bond, and our CD bond. The CH bond is in the back, it's going into the board, we can't see it. And so let's label, this has a 1, this has a 2, this has a 3, and now we draw an arrow starting from 1 going to 2 and going to 3. So our arrow goes this way and notice that it's going counterclockwise and that means this gets an S. So this, as an, so this is an S enantiomer. So let's go to example 2. So once again the same exact story, we're labeling 1 to 4. So here it's easy because this has the lowest atomic number and molecular weight. So that means this gets a 4. Next we have to differentiate between this carbon and this carbon. Well this oxygen clearly gets the highest. So this is a 1 because oxygen has a higher atomic number than both of these carbons. So this gets a 1. But which one of these gets a 3 and which one of these gets a 2? Well, notice that this carbon is attached to 3 deuterium atoms, while this carbon is attached to 3 H atoms. Since deuterium has a higher atomic weight, it's an isotope, that means this gets a 2, so this has second highest priority, and this gets a 3. So once again, we want to look at the bond that has the lowest priority, this CH bond. Now we're looking this way. So let's draw our upside down Y. And we're looking this way. So this bond will be going up. This bond that's coming out of the page is this bond here. And this bond going into the page is this bond here. So let's draw our number, or let's label our number. So two for this one three for this one, and one for this one. So once again, it's going counterclockwise, and that means this is the S enantiomer, so we label it as S. So let's go to example three. So once again, the same exact story, we find our stereogenic carbon, and we label our four different groups. So the one that has the lowest priority is the one that has the lowest atomic number, so that's four, that's the H here. Next. Is it B, R, C, L, or O? Well, O has the lowest atomic number out of all these three uh, groups, and so that means this gets a three. Next up is uh, this atom here because it has the second lowest, um, out of these groups, it has the second lowest atomic weight. 
and this one has the highest atomic weight, atomic number, and atomic weight. So, one, three, two, and four. So once again, we want to block out or hide this CH bond. So we're looking this way at the bond. So the bond will go into the board. So we draw our upside down Y. Here we go. And now we label this top CBR bond as one. This bond coming out of the board will be two, and this will be three. So once again, one, two, three, we're going this way. And now notice we're going clockwise. So that means we label it as R. So this must be the R enantiomer. Let's go to example four. So enantiomer number four. So here we have all the halogens uh, attached to our stereogenic carbon, our chiral carbon. So we begin by figuring out which one of these has the lowest atomic number. So clearly, if you look at the table, the periodic table, you'll see that it's the fluorine atom. So we label it as four. Next up is our chlorine. We label it as three, then two, and then iodide has the highest atomic number, so we give it a one. So once again, the same step as in this step, we're looking this way. We're trying to hide this CF covalent bond. So if we're looking this way, that means we're gonna take it and flip it this way. So we draw our upside down Y, and this I will be on top, so we label that as one. We label this uh, CL as three, and this BR as two, because if we flip it this way, uh, in such a way that the bond goes in the back, we're going to get this orientation. So one, two, three, so once again, we're going uh, clockwise, so this must be the R enantiomer. And let's go to the next one. So once again, the same exact story. We're trying to find our stereogenic carbon, the carbon in the middle, the center carbon, it's chiral. It's attached to four different groups. We start labeling. So this H gets a four because it has the lowest atomic number. Next up, this carbon here gets a three because if we compare it to this one and this one, this carbon is only attached to H's while this carbon is attached to another carbon. And the same story here. So this has the third lowest priority. So uh, next up is this guy because he gets it too because if we go to this carbon and then we go to this carbon we go one more we see that there's one more carbon here but there are only H's here so that means this must have a one and so once again uh, as in this example in this example we're looking this way at our CH bond so that the CH bond stays hidden it goes into the board so we draw our upside down Y and we label so this upper bond here will have a three this bond will have a one and a two and so we have a counterclockwise direction so that means we have an S so finally let's look at example six so this example is interesting because we have a cyclic molecule and we also have not one but two stereogenic carbons. We have this inner carbon that is stereogenic and this outer carbon that's also stereogenic. They're both attached to four different groups. So let's begin with the inner one. Here we'll get two different diagrams because we have two stereogenic carbon. So let's begin with the inner one. So let's draw our upside down Y for the inner one and the upside down Y for the outer one. So the inner one has this H group, this methyl group, and it has these two groups. So let's begin by labeling the four, the lowest priority. So this H has the lowest atomic number, so it gets a four. This methyl group is next up, it gets a three. Why? Well, because this H is attached to eight, or this C is attached to H atoms, while these guys are attached to carbon atoms. Next, we label the two. So, which one wins, this side or this side? Well, this side has less carbons than this side because here we have an ethyl group. So that means this carbon gets a one and this car uh, carbon gets a two. So that means we get three, two, one, and so we're going right, and so this must be an R. So once again, we're looking at this carbon in such a way such that this carbon uh, H bond is being hidden into the board. It's going inside the board. And so we get the following diagram. Now let's look at the bottom one. So let's erase some of these 
labels so that we can label the other carbon. So, once again, this gets a 4. So, next up is, well, this one is an ethyl group, while here we have 1, 2, 3 carbons, here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and here we have only 2. So, this gets a 3. Next up is this 2, and this is 1. Why is this 1? Well, because if we compare this and this side, we see that this side has one more carbon atom than this side. And so this has a higher atomic weight, and so this side wins. And so we get the following picture. So we are, we're looking at this carbon bond here, so we're looking this way. So that means this top will be a 3. This will be a 2 here, and that will be a 1. So if we flip it this way. And so now we're going in the opposite direction counterclockwise, and so this must be an S. So this carbon is R enantiomer, and this carbon is S enantiomer.